I am the uh, lead pastor at Emmanuel Church of the Nazarene. Emmanuel Church of the Nazarene is located about 10 minutes from here. If you go down 471 south to the end, turn left, go two lights, turn left, you're there. Um, but we're down near NKU, we're down in God's country of Kentucky. So when you need a break from the world of Cincinnati, come on down to Kentucky and, and we'll let you, let you know you're loved and appreciated. I have a wife and a family who are not here with me. Um, my wife Laura, my son Ian. We've got another one on the way due any, any time now, from here until she comes. <laughs> so my life's about to really get exciting. I've got a, a, a dog that you'll see walking around. Sometimes he'll be walking around what looks like a homeless person. It's probably me. Feel free to talk to me. I'm okay with that. But uh, I, I do have a dog that's very friendly. And so when you see us walking around, I live very close to here. When you see us walking around, just say hi to him. He loves people and uh, he'll love the attention. I graduated from God's Bible School. I, I say I got the third degree from GBS because I actually came here in high school. I got my start in ministry, started following God as a 14 year old and came here 12 hours away from home and uh, followed God. Didn't know what I was getting into. Still not sure what I got into, but I love it. God's been good to me. And then I, I went to college here and uh, did an Associate of Arts, and then I came back and did a BA, and then I've gone on and gotten my Master's from Cincinnati Christian. Uh, I've been in the realms of youth ministry, pastoral counseling, psychology, and theology are, are my areas that I've studied and I'm strong in. Um, I actually, one of the things I've helped was, I'm very familiar with GBS, not only have I been here through lots of degrees, but I've actually taught here as a teacher, adjunct instructor for several years. I helped them develop the youth ministry program between the different divisions and was a part of the ministerial division in my teaching and I, I really enjoyed that and had a lot of fun with that. And so that's a little bit about me. I've been at the current church where I'm serving for about uh, 12 years on staff with me right now. We don't have any other staff. I have one uh, unpaid staff member who's ordained in the Church of the Nazarene. It's uh, James Sedlicek. And he teaches and fills in for me. He teaches the morning Sunday school, fills in, and he right now he's working on his doctorate, so he's gone a lot. And he's in England or Ireland or somewhere out out there doing some work, very intensive work with the Greek that should probably impact the way the Greek textbooks are written, actually. So it's a pretty interesting thing, uh, very technical. So if, if you're in the ministerial department, you ever need help with Greek and things, he does tutoring and, and other aspects with those, and he'd be a, a, glad to help you. Um, a little bit about Emmanuel, our purpose, statement, mission statements together, being and making Christ-like disciples. And uh, we believe we're called to make Christ-like disciples. In order to make disciples, you really need to be a disciple because you're going to bring people to something, and I want to bring them to Jesus. Um, but we want to do that together. That together is a key word for us. We're a small, multicultural congregation. Uh, we've had lots of international students who are there. We have actually international people who are there who are not students. And uh, really, our church really embraces and loves the different uh, ethnic flavors that come through the body of Christ. And we're very open and receptive to that and love it. It's, it's something we enjoy. We're in a process of, I say broadening our vision, but really what we're doing is narrowing it. Uh, as I was leading this church that was kind of floundering, they weren't sure what to do, they've had some issues in the past, and we're trying to figure out what we're doing. We were having vision meetings, we have one once a year, we're having vision meetings with the leadership, and we were talking about reaching our community for Christ. Within five miles of our church, there's 50,000 people. And if I understand correctly, about 60% to 70% of those are completely unchurched. Unreached, unchurched. We're 50 people. How do you make a difference? So we're sitting there looking at that. Oh, it sounds all great. We've got NKU bias. We've got all these things. We've got this. And one of the people finally said, why don't we just make it smaller? So we've decided to put a triangle around our church. And our goal is to consistently bring the people in that community right there by our church to try to bring them to Jesus and from there reach out. And that's kind of our goal. So we're really looking to come in and, and make a difference in that way. Um, as it relates to you, as I was telling some of the people in my church on a Sunday night that I was going to come and present our church to you, I, I wanted to know what they think about our church. How would you present our church to the students at God's Bible School? 
and they gave me some ideas, and then I had one of the ladies pray, and I, I don't know about you, I like hearing other people pray. You, you get a chance to hear their heart. And I love, I, I've confessed to my church people, one of the reasons I don't pray a lot in church is I love to hear you pray. I love to hear what's on your heart and on your mind and on your soul as a pastor. And I asked Rita, she's one of our, our dear saints and prayer warriors, and I said, would you pray for me as I go to GBS? And I, I wish I had recorded that prayer. I really do. It was so beautifully put and so heartfelt. And, and the basic of it is this. She said, God, you know how much we love having the students from God's Bible school come and be a part of our congregation. And come and serve with us and help us accomplish what you're doing. Would you please help us find the right ones and help them to come and just know that we love them and we care about them? I thought, wow. What a beautiful picture of my church people. Um, we have room in our hearts for you. I came here and, and we came here at the same time. Uh, I almost said Miss A.G. again. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still calling her by her her unmarried name. And uh, what she said, she remembers, she was she goes, you know what, I remember a conversation I had with you around the fish pond. It used to be the fish pond up here. And she goes, I remember a conversation. She goes, Meredith, I'm, she goes, you looked at me and said, I'm not sure if I fit in here. Have you ever felt like that? You just don't know where you fit. I know what that feels like. And uh, I'm very sensitive to that. And if you come be a part of our church, I want to let you know you're going to fit. Mm -hmm. We have a place for you. You belong. And uh, we have room in our hearts for you. We don't desire to be somewhere where you simply serve. We want to give you the opportunity to serve. Because I believe the outflow of a heart of love for Jesus is wanting to find ways to, to make a difference in his kingdom. But we're not going to be a place that says, well, you just come here and serve and go on your way. We want to be a place where you connect and belong. We want to be family. When I came to God's Bible School in college, 14 hours from home, never been here, never been in a city, little country boy, a large church attendance for us was 30. I, mean, I was a busting the doors out. And I came here in city life. I mean, the town I grew up in was 99 people, and we were seven of them. <laughs> I needed a home. I needed a place that would let me come and be a part of who they were and let me learn to love and serve Jesus in that context. And that's what we are going to offer to you. Uh, we want to offer you a home church that accepts you as one of the family while helping you find your place to serve and develop you in that service. So my philosophy is that the church is an organized organism. It's organic. And what that means is, I have all kinds of job descriptions, and I'm going to talk about some of them, opportunities, specific opportunities to serve in job descriptions. But really, as a pastor, what I'm looking for is someone who has a heart for God and a love for the ministry and wants to say, you know what, this is the group of people I want to say is my family, and we're going to find a way to make a difference in the kingdom right here, right now, in the midst of everything that's going on. Um, so our, opportunity, our, our opportunities for service really... I'm going to give you some, but they're really unlimited. Uh, if you're looking for a home church, what I'm saying is we want to be that church. Now, do any of you like tacos? You like tacos? Mom likes tacos? Well, I'm hoping you like tacos. We're a church with a big heart, but here's what we offer. We offer tacos. All right? We're going to offer an opportunity for training that works with GBS to help equip you. I worked in the ministerial division. I know what they're trying to do with you. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to not just give you a head knowledge that goes, oh, I know and I can pass a test. They're trying to give you the opportunity to put that head knowledge into practice and into the heart so you go out and, and can do something when you leave here, not wait until you leave here to figure out what you're doing. I want to be a part of that process with you. I was a part of it here in the, in the figuring out how the divisions work and things. I want to be a part of that in your home church and in your church life. I want to give you an opportunity for accountability. I, I tell I was a youth pastor for years and years and years, and I would tell my youth, I will be as committed to you as you are. Now, I won't commit to you greater than you will, because it's a waste of my time. Mm. But I will be as committed to you as you are. I'm a human, I'm limited, but I will give everything I can to help in your area of life, to help you be the person Jesus wants you to be. 
And I would hope you would do the same for me. Because I'm on a journey too. See, the goal of discipleship isn't just to get you where I am and, and always hold you here behind me so you can follow me. The goal of discipleship is to bring you into maturity of Christ so we can walk arm in arm for the kingdom of God. And that's my goal. Looking for a place of accountability, we can offer that. Looking for community. Looking for a place where you belong, where you fit, where you can come at the level where you are and be grown and developed into who God is making you. Where you can start like I did at the inner city mission, too shy to even go out and call. So my, my ministry at the inner city mission was cleaning the restrooms in the church while everybody else went out calling. But I told God, God, if you'll show me a need that I can do, I, here I am. And that developed until two years as I was in that mission, my pastor comes up to me one time and he goes, hey, Meredith, will you preach for me? I said, hey, what about, he said, oh, they're in band with me. I said, well, what about, and he goes, oh, no, he's going home. Well, what about, and he finally just stops me and he looks and says, Meredith, I understand if you don't want to speak. He said, just tell me. He said, but here's my situation. If you don't do it, I have to close the doors of the mission because no one is. Now, I don't know if that was a good or... Looking back at it now, I'm hearing myself say, I was like, man, I was his really last resort. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good thing. But I do know how God dealt with me. He said, Meredith, you said, if I gave you an opportunity you could do, you would present the person. I'd never spoken. I'm shy. It doesn't come naturally for me. But I got, gave God the person I was, and he has developed me and taken me on a journey that is more incredible than I could have ever written for myself. Thanks, God. And he's not done with me yet. He's still growing me and developing me. Come be a part of my journey with me. Training, accountability, community, a place to belong, a place to be, and opportunity. And the opportunities are endless. You know why? Because the needs of people are, are endless. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about those opportunities. Um, but the reason I start out the way I did is I want you to know that we want you to be a part. And you can be a necessary part. But I won't be a part of God's kingdom and do what God wants. You have an opportunity to come alongside of that if He wants you there. But I want you to be where God wants you to be. I want you to find that place. Um, we have all kinds of, of service opportunities. Uh, Jaquan. He's from the Bahamas. He's a student here getting in an upper years, I think. And we've been working with him. I've been doing discipleship. He and I have been connecting. He's been coming to our church. He's a licensed. And also, if you're a minister, we do licensing and help you get licensed and ordained and those kind of things. It's part of my process. Um, but he's getting licensed. He should be up for his uh, district licensing reviews this year. He's been helping with our youth ministry department. Our youth ministry consists of just a few kids, but our community is loaded with them. I'm looking for people with heart and passion to come out and say, you know what, let's make a difference for the kingdom of Christ right here. It's not that far away. Um, so you can talk to Jaquan. You'll see his smiling face around here if you're interested in youth or being a part of that. He'll take you up on his team, I guarantee it. Our church time, Sunday morning, 9.30 Sunday school, 10.30 church, Sunday evening at 6. We have youth group. We have other things. We have a, a different lesson. Uh, one of the things we're looking for in this, I would love to have some speakers. If you're preaching or teaching, um, oh, go back. He's, he's giving me the back. Oh, wow. It skipped a lot. Thank you on it. Oh, that's helped me out. This thing gets kind of crazy. Um, so I could use opportunities for someone to be developed as an associate minister. I would love to have someone come along and help me carry the heart and learn the background to ministry, not just the speaking part of it. Um, children's ministry. My wife looked at me. My wife's been doing children's ministry. She's having her second kid any day now. She looked at me and she said, under, under no uncertain terms, Meredith, when I have our daughter, I'm not carrying her around in children's church like I did Ian. We have a need. A legitimate need. But you know what? We also have an opportunity to develop. We had a VBS. We had seven kids from our community who have never been inside of our door that lived right within a few blocks of our church. Okay, what would it be like to be a part of a ministry where you can go and start building in a community and start sharing love with Jesus with people who are unreached? Mm -hmm. They don't know Jesus. And from the ground up, really start developing that. Um, we have uh, administrative assistant needs. I 
don't have a secretary, I'm part time. I would love to have an organized person who just, it is their passion in life to organize people and keep them structured. Come talk to me. I would love to have you. It doesn't even ha you don't, it, it can happen other times of the week besides Sunday. It'd be terrific. Lots of outside with that. Um, I'm open to starting, this has kind of been on my heart, so I'm sharing it here. But I'm really open to starting a non-English speaking service in our church. In our, in our building. Because we're the church. We have a multicultural group. But we only have one language that we do our services in. Now, we don't need it necessarily now, but you know, there are people groups in this city who maybe don't hear the word of God in their language. If that's one of your heart passions, you know there's some other people around you who say, hey, I want a place to do that. Come talk to me. You have a group of people that's a part of another church and you're already part of it, and you don't have a place to meet. Come talk to me. I'm very open to that. The uh, come and care is the biggest thing. At the core of who we are is a caring group. And what I'm wanting to do, and I, I need help with this, I, I need leaders at all levels, and I need participants. We are learning how to come and care, and that's going to involve prayer care for both outreach people and people inside the church, uh, card care and note care. It will be including hospital visitation. It will include just in notes of encouragement or, hey, where have you been? Are you okay? We've been missing you. Or, hey, thanks for coming and visiting our church. Let us tell you about us. Um, we are really wanting to do that. I, I really have the need of a really a leader who wants to have a passion for that and start really working it and making that the very core of who we are as a church so that people don't fall through the cracks. Because you know what happens when people fall through the cracks? Souls go to hell. And I don't want that. I, w I want to stop that from happening in our, our place. So we have all kinds of opportunities. Um, I mean, it's really unlimited. We have outreach things we do that you can be a part of specific things. We've got a tea party coming up where we're raising money for the Marshall family on the mission field and special speaker, people putting that together. We've got Trunk and Treat, which is a big major event where we have 250 people from our community come through. This past year we added a prayer station. Uh, we give out Jesus film videos. Every year we find a way to do something like that. It's just a, a, a fun time, but it's also a great time of ministry. We're constantly looking for avenues. Really, the opportunities are unlimited. The question is, is it on your heart to come join us? Mm -hmm. Find your place where you can find the people you want to minister with. And, and I would love to be a part of that journey if, if that's where you feel like you belong. Okay? Um, I don't have any papers for you today, but you're college students, right? You don't want any more papers, right? <laughs> you get enough papers, more. I, I, I have so many on my desk. If you need paper, come to me. I've got all kinds of sermons, all kinds of things waiting to be organized on my desk. But what I do have for you today is a pen. And on that pen, you'll find our church name, our, our phone number, and our website. If you go and go to Facebook, if you have Facebook, go to that and just type in that website name or Emmanuel Church of the Nazarene, either one, and it'll pop up our page, and you'll be able to get in contact with me. Um, my phone number, Amit will have that on the sheets on the portal, but if, if you need it, call the number on the pen because I don't have a secretary, and you know what that means as a pastor? It means the church phone bounces to my personal phone mm. when it doesn't get answered. So feel free to call that number and get in touch with me. Um, <clears throat> So that's what I have for you today. Thank you for your your time and attention. Now I've really messed it up. I'm gonna put these down. Oh, that's the one thing I forgot. Are you not technologically challenged? Are you good with technology? We really need help in our sound and our video booth. We have video ministry that I'd really love to see. Our guy that was doing it is doing it no more. But it's a video ministry where we record services, get them out to people who can't come, and do things. I'd like to see us on Facebook Live and having that happening regularly different aspects like that. If you're into technology, I can obviously need help. But the, the big thing is, if you're looking for a church family where you can grow and develop, 